Allow me to preface this by saying that I am not in any way, shape, or form an expert on how genetics affect the human body, nor am I claiming to be through this video. These are simply my thoughts on a topic through my experience as a top rhythm game player, average endurance athlete, and avid watcher of many sports and sports content in general. With that said, enjoy the video. Over the last few years, the term genetics has been getting tossed around in the rhythm game landscape, but some people have abused the word so much that they often put it one-to-one -one or close to one-to-one -to -one with skill, stripping the term from its more practical uses. This is a logical fallacy that has seemed to permeate amongst the rhythm game spectators, so I'm going to try and nuance the notion as best as I can of if genetics play a role in rhythm games, and if so, by how much. As a top player of a game I played for about 15 years now, which are the primary four key games, Stepmania, Eterna, and Osamania, I've learned a lot on how fast people improve in my game and other games as well, and I've seen rising stars come and go, especially in the last five years. To name a few from my game, Anmal, Miyuka, and Atong, or to name a few from Clone Hero, Shmui, ENV, and Frosted. We'll even name some from Osu too. Murami, Mrek, and of course, Vaxe. These are all super talented players that have climbed to the top of the ranks almost faster than any other existing player, and have pushed the envelope for how high the skill ceiling really is. The question is, do they have good genetics? Well, yeah, there's no doubt about that. But are they good because they have good genetics? No. They obviously had to work very hard to get where they are at today, as genetics alone will not just grant you skill alone. But let's not beat around the bush and say that it doesn't help them at all. There are other factors on why players are improving so fast in rhythm games in all skill levels, however, and I want to touch on those so you don't assume every player that starts to become skilled in any rhythm game is simply improving fast because they picked the right parents. Let's start with the first point. Most rhythm games have so much more quality content nowadays, compared to 10 years ago, that you could just hop in and have access to hundreds or even thousands of songs to choose from, covering all difficulties. So many players back then were limited to the amount of hard material they had at their disposal because A, the skill ceiling was much lower years ago, and B, there might not have been enough people to even make said content to begin with. Thor was virtually the undisputed Stepmania god for years back in the late 2000s, using an old membrane keyboard with scores that have aged well even 10 years later. But a lot of the hard content that existed back then were abysmally charted files that were just hard for the sake of being hard, and even then that was relatively scarce. It also didn't test many relevant skill sets properly, which capped the skill ceiling fairly quickly. Nowadays, you could just ask around for difficulty packs relating to a specific skill set or speed, and boom, you can already start practicing. There's also the accessibility of rate mods, or rather a smarter use of rate mods in a decent amount of games that allow players to keep track of their progress so much easier too. Hardware has since improved as well, since there are a billion different mechanical keyboards and tablets, optimized pad modification in games like TDR and ITG, and more. All of these factors alone are guaranteed to ramp up the skill curve for any game. If you want another example that's not related to rhythm games, Alan Thrall's video on World's Strongest Man 1995 is a fantastic video to watch if you want to understand this concept and later concepts in this video more. This can vary game to game, but even then it can still apply. If there are going to be a larger volume of people playing your game, chances are you're going to have a better chance of having a freak or two that could just pick up the game in a week faster than most people could in three months. It just simply happens. Not only that, but these are generally very young players too. This is where adaptive neuroplasticity comes into play. Adaptive neuroplasticity is much more apparent when you are younger, and thus being able to form new skills much faster. Muscle memory is certainly not an exception to this role at all, and since there are more and more younger generations catching on to rhythm games, there's a more likely chance you will see a higher concentrated population of higher skilled players. This is not to say that you will be behind the curve if you start at a later age. There are plenty of people who started their rhythm game careers fairly late and are still dominating their respective games today. Competitiveness is also higher since there are more players too, and leaderboard systems can increase this along with that, so players feel more incentivized to train harder and more often, which in turn helps them improve faster. Lastly, there are some mental barriers that people don't seem to talk about, which helps players improve further and further. Clone Hero is a fantastic example of this that when a player becomes the first to FC something, it makes it much more believable to other players, and next thing you know, something like Solus 4 is 3 FCs happening in the span of a couple months after it took 4 years to FC it. 
This can also apply to lower level players too across rhythm games, where if they see someone around their skill level doing something, this can cause them to replicate or even improve upon that score just by virtue of seeing other people do so. So how much do genetics specifically play a role in one's ability to excel at rhythm games at a top level? Well, there's really no concrete answer to that, but I will say this. Any top 10 player, or even further than that, depending on what you value as skill in said list, most likely has genetics that allow them the ability to develop muscle memory, have faster fast twitch muscles, and have a better understanding of rhythm, greater than people that don't have said genetics. The degree these play a role, however, are nowhere near as prevalent as one might think, so do not think that good genetics just simply grant them the ability to play at a top level, and that people that are not as gifted don't have a chance at competing with such players. I'm not going to let this video get carried away too much, but virtually every household name in sports has amazing genetics that allow them to do what they do, combined with their extremely admirable hard work ethic. Hard work is important, as it's crucial to being good at quite literally anything, but it would be ignorant to not acknowledge that they are also gifted people that are able to progress at a naturally faster rate than most people. If we're being real here, I would consider myself to be gifted in 4K, especially when it comes to accuracy. Ever since I was 7 or 8 years old, I always had a natural sense of rhythm whenever I was exposed to it, and as I got older, I was naturally able to understand complex and technical rhythms, which allowed me to set some of the best technical accuracy scores in all 4K. But I also worked very hard to get to the level I'm at today, as it took me years on years to get to that point. In the end, this is a reality that still doesn't get talked about enough in my opinion in certain sports, and has not been properly articulated in rhythm games properly either. The only place I've seen it talked about enough to a wider audience is primarily strength sports like bodybuilding, Olympic lifting, strongman, powerlifting, etc. But I figured it was worth relaying this information to you all here, because transparency is key. Are people genetically gifted in rhythm games? Yes. But of hardware, better in-game content, and simply having a higher concentration of players also all played a role in the development of top-level play? 100%. But again, we can't be ignorant and not acknowledge that talent exists, and that it can allow players to become better at the game faster than others. Now does this mean that if you think you are not gifted enough, you should just quit playing rhythm games semi-competitive or competitively? No, I'm not saying that at all. But I think it's necessary that you all understand the reality of how genetics on a relative level play a role in things that require you to maximize your physical capabilities, and rhythm games fall into this category. The great thing about a lot of rhythm games, however, is that there are so many different types of ways you can play, and that alone allows players of all shapes and sizes to be the best at what they can be. I'm really not trying to bullshit you here, and I'm just saying that to make you feel better. If your rhythm game offers an outlet where you can play a totally different way, try it out. See what you're good at. Try accuracy, reading challenges, one-handed stuff, memorization, technicality. There is so much more you can do in rhythm games than you'd think, and could unlock a hidden talent that you yourself might not be aware of. But also I think a lot of people would surprise themselves if they put a little more effort into before, explore different skill sets, and just train a bit smarter overall. Maybe you can't be the fastest player in the world, or have the best stamina in the world, but I would never ever say it's not worth trying to do so. But it also never hurts to try other things on top of that. I hope this video sends the right message, as I know this might not be some of you want to hear, but I think it's what you all deserve to hear. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, I'm actually really interested in what you guys think of this topic. Thank you to all my patrons for supporting the channel, and if you'd like to support the channel for more rhythm gaming content like this, feel free to check out my Patreon, drop a sub if you're new here, and check out my other links below. I'll see you on whatever video I upload next, and take care.